Good morning, ministers, distinguished colleagues from all over the world, excellencies, ambassadors, MPs, presidents, ladies and gentlemen, a special welcome to everyone who supports climate protection and the energy transition. Standing here in the front gives me the opportunity to see a really impressive picture. There are even more participants than last year. There are more ministers than last year. And this serves as proof that the energy transition is making headway. And this is necessary. It is absolutely necessary because what our world needs is shared projects. Shared projects that are easily to define freedom and peace for everyone in the world, the right and the possibility to aspire to prosperity everywhere in the world. And all this is only going to work out if we hand over to our children and grandchildren a planet that has an intact climate that is operating on renewables and that uses its natural resources in a protective way. This means deploying new technologies and it means engaging in cooperation. We are seeing very interesting developments. On the one hand, we're seeing that we've made great headway when it comes to deploying renewables in China and in Vietnam, in Turkey and Morocco, in the United Arab Emirates and in many other countries in the world, including Europe and in particular Germany. So these are all countries where we're seeing renewables being deployed at a large speed. And the good news is many of these countries are now able to offer renewable energy at competitive prices. If we want to achieve a situation whereby our citizens and our world can rely on clean energy at a reliable price, we need to actually focus on competition, on the business case. And we also need to realize that the transition from the, the age of fossil fuels to the age of renewables is a transition with intermediate steps. So, so that means old power plants with high emissions need to be switched off and replaced with modern gas-fired power plants that, re that cut emissions by half. This marks an important step towards a, an energy system that one day will be 100% renewable. And we will only be able to walk this way successfully if we support each other. Germany has concluded energy partnerships with a large number of countries. We also have economic partnerships with a large number of countries. And I will make use of this conference to have bilateral talks with many of my colleagues and to extend our cooperation. We know that this is not only about cooperation between ministers from various countries. It is cooperation between governments, between industry and society. Because all over the globe there are companies that specialize in this type of technology, that offer this type of technology, and that are able to actually modernize the energy supply of entire countries to make them more efficient and greener. And for this reason, we have a shared responsibility, because in our world there are trade conflicts emerging. Many countries are having disputes with other countries about tariffs and about whether or not to pull up the economic drawbridge and isolate one's market. They are trying to gain a small advantage and they neglect to see that this will harm the overall uh, global economy. Christine Lagarde explained to us that over the past month, uh, past few months, we've seen the global economy cool down. So she called it a synchronized slowdown. And this is not inevitable. We can do something to address this and we can achieve this if we work together and if we really invest more in our energy supply. Energy powers economic growth. Economic growth and the energy supply must go hand in hand and they must be sustainable 
in the long term. And this is why we need this approach. Over the past few years, we've talked a lot. We talked about modern power plants, about wind farms, about photovoltaics, and we will continue to do so. It continues to be important. And there are so many countries that are only just beginning to really look into these technologies and the opportunities they offer. But we also need to take the next step. We need to work together with the IEA and also with IRENA, which has its second seat in Bonn. And of course, we, would, we will support them and their new president so that they can do their job. We need systems integration. We need to make sure that renewables will also be deployed in transport, in building energy, in agriculture and in all these sectors. In many countries we are also thinking about hydrogen strategies. Many countries are thinking about this. None of this is a secret anymore. But at the same time, we also need to really bring together these activities into a joint hydrogen uh, strategy, and we need to work on this. Electric mobility will be part of our strategy. We will have alternative drive lines, and Kenya and other countries have already made major headway here. Europe has made major progress on the deployment of renewable energies, and we also want to play an important role in the mobility transition, and this is why we are investing in modern battery cells. This is why we're investing in alternative driveline technology. This is why we're investing in synthetic climate neutral fuels. In Germany, we decided to phase out our coal and lignite production and replacing these old power plants with renewables. And we're demonstrating that a highly industrialized country like Germany is able, within just a few decades, to almost completely rearrange its energy system without harming its competitiveness, without destroying jobs. We're proud that Germany has uh, 45 million people in work, in paid work, and this is the largest number in our history, despite the fact that we are at the forefront of renewable energies of resource efficiency and sustainability. We know how many activities you are undertaking in your countries, and we know that in the role of a foreign minister, of an energy minister, it can be very hard in discussions with ministers of finance and with heads of government. But at the same time, we also know that it's getting easier for the energy transition or to uh, advocate the energy transition because there are many positive examples, not just Germany. There are others across the world. And this is something that really needs to motivate us. So let us make a commitment to multilateralism. And let us make a commitment to bilateral and multilateral cooperation and to solidarity. Let us share our experiences with the energy transition. The energy transition in other countries, in other continents, all this really has a positive impact on all of us because it makes the entire planet more sustainable, safer and more stable. We are convinced that it will help with stability when all of your citizens have equal access to energy, to water, to heat and to mobility. So we are convinced that we must not destroy the aspirations and dreams of our citizens, the dreams of living a happy life in uh, prosperity and in an intact environment. This is what young people are working towards in Bangladesh, in Indonesia, in the Philippines, in Egypt, in Saudi Arabia, in, Germany, in Europe and everywhere in the world. So this is our challenge. So let us work towards this challenge. I wish you positive and fruitful discussions, good deals, and I wish us all that we will see more progress in the, on the energy transition next year, that we'll see that the, there is visible progress and measurable progress on the deployment of renewable energy so that we can show that economic growth and climate protection can go hand in hand. So I wish you all the best for this conference in Berlin.